Welcome again. Today we look at how to mark a chemistry IA. And this is a good example for students to understand how their marks are going to be allocated by their teacher when they write up their internal assessment final report. This particular example was scored as 14 out of 24 by me. It was actually submitted uh, by me, by one of my students, who I will not name here, of course. And when it was submitted to the IB, it was also scored by the IB as 14 out of 24. Personally, I think it's quite rigorous, but what students need to bear in mind is that 14 out of 24, while you might think it's not such a high score, it actually shows a very good understanding of how to write up a scientific lab report. And here we see this particular research question chosen by the student. One of the things about this research question is that in the year 2020, given that the particular version of this IB chemistry guide that the student is participating in would have been around since 2016, a number of students over the years would have done labs that are almost identical to this research question. In fact, the IB has mentioned in its reports very often that this type of iodometric titration, the student is going to use uh, a titration with, uh, with iodine and sodium thiosulfate, this type of uh, determination of vitamin C or ascorbic acid has been done uh, many times, especially with orange juice. So immediately it sets a tone with the examiner that this is not something that is very original. And unless there's some deeper explanation as to some specific research question or some great engagement with lots of data and rigorous procedure, immediately this is going to score one out of two for the first criterion, which is personal engagement. This particular page is available on the internet as the chemistry teacher support material. And here you will see the way that the marks are given, the 24 marks. Personal engagement, it says here, requires all of this. What the student's done immediately, of course, is chosen a question that is limited in the sense that it's been done many times before. So therefore, what evidence is there that this is some kind of, of deep, personal question that was generated by the student? While that might be so, because it comes on the back of so many similar reports in the past, it's likely to immediately figure into this one out of two and not score here. Of course, it's not just the question and the context that determines this. It also has to do with all of the other criteria and how deeply engaged the student is. But if you start off by choosing something that's been done many times before and you don't explain how this is different, then you are likely going to score one out of two for personal engagement. The student does go on to give a little bit of an introduction to the research question here. All valid. I note that there are no citations in text, but sources at the end are included. Uh, it's, it is good, of course, to have in-text citations, just as the student might have learnt from writing up their extended essay, so too you want to follow that same type of citation in your introduction and throughout your, your in individual investigation write-up, or what we call the IA. Here is a, an equation again. Um, perhaps this should be cited, where that equation came from. Uh, the students stated two hypotheses, uh, a null and an alternative hypothesis. Here, with respect to temperature, in here, the specific range of temperature is mentioned, but not really in the research question. The research question is pretty general. It says the effect of varying temperature on the mass of ascorbic acid. And here, some explanation is given about the independent variable and the dependent variable and how that would be measured. Some 
idea of control variables is included and they explain how they're going to be controlled especially here the source uh, of the oranges for example the procedure is given with the apparatus uh, listed here that's fine you can do that some details about the solutions that were used how they were made but let's look here cut an orange into small pieces put it into a food processor then collect the orange juice that doesn't exactly explain how to extract the juice and that of course is fundamental to doing this activity so that someone can replicate what you did with another another type of orange uh, another species of citrus and follow what you did and compare their results to yours but if they are not given the details as to how to extract the juice then that part of the lab is greatly going to be lacking and it's important to do that because in the real practice of science uh, when a procedure or a protocol is presented it's with the idea that others are going to try to replicate your work so therefore it's important that they get enough information so that they would be able to successfully replicate your work and then whatever results they get they should be able to compare it to yours for validity and, and in so doing extend the scientific knowledge because they might be investigating a different species of orange or a different species of citrus plant or something like that. Going down, um, more details are given. Quite a number of details are included. Now another part of this experiment that's very important is getting the orange juice to the specific temperature. And here we don't see enough details given as to how long the juice was kept at that temperature. It suggests that it might be one minute, but that is a little bit ambiguous. Place the 50 ml beaker on the heating mantle, measure the temperature of the orange juice with a thermometer, record for one minute once it reaches a specific value. What is missing is that it's not clear as to whether this was actually left for one minute, two minutes, five minutes, at that specific temperature so that is a little bit ambiguous also and that needs to be clarified then some consideration is given here with uh, safety ethical and, and environmental issues it's always good though to not just um, write these but to go find the MSDS sheet for the chemicals that you use and to cite that MSDS sheet here in this risk assessment area if you have to dispose of any chemicals there should also be some statement saying how the chemicals are disposed of in your particular laboratory that you're working in so here no such statement was made um, but enough was given in this procedure to if we go to the exploration criteria to say that the report shows evidence of awareness of significant safety. It's mainly appropriate to address the research question, but does have some limitations since it takes into consideration only some. There were a few things missing. So definitely belonging in the three to four band, and I would say it belongs as a four out of six, giving the student the benefit, having quite a lot of information the background was relevant the topic was identified although it was not fully focused all of these were quite well met and therefore four out of six is very much deserved to go along with the one out of two for the first section going in now to the data processing section and it might look quite nice this table one where the students done the five trials but immediately here, uncertainty is neglected with respect to temperature. Even though in the calculations to follow, uncertainty is included with temperature, here it's not. Then a standard deviation is given. And the question again is, is a standard deviation really valid with just five trials? It's always important whatever statistical test or instrument you're using to know its strengths and its weaknesses. Uh, for standard deviation to be of any value, actually, you need a, a continuous distribution of data. And, of course, more significantly here, you need about 10 trials, not just 5. 
and 10 trials is really a minimum for a standard deviation to be valid. So therefore, using the standard deviation here, it is a statistical tool, but it's not particularly valid. And then, look at this uncertainty, 0 0.05 milliliters. But then, the last significant digit in all of the data given is to one decimal place here. Following procedures given in the chemistry guide, it means two things. The student needs to include a zero after all of these, or change this to plus or minus 0 0.5 of a milliliter. Both of those would be valid approaches. But of course, because this is a burette, the chemistry guide here specifies exactly how to deal with readings from the burette. And here you can read that if you have a reading of 34.1, it should be given as 34.10 plus or minus 0 0.05 cm cube or ml that would be that would be acceptable either one that you use but for the burette it's explicitly stated here now you could choose to have a bigger uncertainty if you choose to have a bigger uncertainty and leave this as 34.1 then you can't put uncertainty as this because significant figures then won't be consistent with uncertainty so therefore, you then have to go with plus or minus half of this ones unit, which would be 0 0.5. Uncertainty can be quite large, as it's mentioned here. It's really for the student to examine what they have done and to look at all of the errors associated with their procedure before deciding what to put as the uncertainty. This is particularly of greater relevance in in the life sciences and in environmental science where sometimes there's a huge amount of uncertainty associated with the measurement of something like a root or a shoot whereas in the physical sciences it tends to be less of an issue here for example with the burette there's a specific protocol stated here in the chemistry teacher uh, support material and i would recommend that you follow this for all of your measurements with the burette these Issues, though, immediately affect the communication criterion, which is scored out of four. So uh, while communication is quite good with this uh, report so far, these issues have already meant that it's going to be scored as three out of four. Then some qualitative observations. Always good to have those. The student goes on to find the average Find the mass of ascorbic acid as stated in this research question. Place uncertainties here, which the calculations for arriving at those are well explained here. Good error propagation is included as given in the TSM. Here you can follow all of the details of how to deal with um, error propagation and uncertainty. And then a graph with, again, with error bars based on standard deviation, which is like, like I pointed out not really a valid tool but the student did include an r squared value and did go on to talk about what the trend means and not go into too much detail of trying to interpret what was happening and to give reasons and to find correlation in the literature for what was happening so a pretty simple evaluation of the data even though the data itself was well presented and my perspective on this uh, write-up led me to believe that it should be four initially but then after reflecting a little bit more on it and I felt that even though it looks good it was not appropriate it might have been sufficient but it was not appropriate because for instance the use of the standard deviation that would be treated separately from communication because communication is about not dealing with uncertainty but the fact that the wrong statistical tool was chosen and the student didn't appreciate the limitations of using standard deviation then that is what allowed me to say let's go with a three instead of a four where in the chemistry guide students might ask is it that you're supposed to know about standard deviation and 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 all of those statistical things that you're expected to know and the thing about it is students are supposed to be collecting that knowledge 
from whatever math course you're taking in the IB diploma. And if you're not a diploma candidate, of course, it's expected that you are taking some kind of mathematics and you could bring your knowledge of that. And your teacher is supposed to tell you that at this level, you are supposed to be doing some kind of uh, statistical analysis, whether it's the R squared value, whether it's uh, standard deviation, where it's the, where, whether it's the analysis of variance. And at the very minimum, of course, you should have uh, some descriptive statistics like like the mean at least in your data analysis section so coming back now to the evaluation given by the student and again the evaluation is not showing a deep engagement and involvement and deep reflection on the experiment it is relevant what all of the points that are being raised here the strengths and the weaknesses talk about the r squared value but again, the fact that this is not a very original investigation and the student doesn't go into any kind of deep personal uh, analysis, then it's going to definitely belong in the three to four mark band again. And here with the, with the possible extension, there is no citation as to where any of this is coming from. That affects communication, of course. But what is particularly significant is that there is no attempt made to compare findings to the literature. While there is some recommendation here of an extension, which could be a little bit more elaborate, there is no attempt to compare findings to the literature. And that immediately puts it in the three to four mark band again. And I would again go with a three for this, finally ending with a three for communication. So a three for the evaluation where the students describe some realistic suggestions, strengths and weaknesses, uh, there is an awareness. A conclusion is described that makes some relevant comparison to the accepted scientific context. And I think that is, uh, there isn't very much comparison at all to the relevant scientific context. So it is a four because it's, to start off with, the, the question is not very complicated. It's fairly simple. Uh, not advanced enough to really get into this area because there isn't that much complexity to evaluate, first of all. And one thing students have to be aware of in chemistry, biology, ESS, physics is from the very start, if your research question is a little bit too simple, it's going to limit the kind of data that you can collect, how many trials you can do, and of course, very important, what do you have to evaluate? But what the student missed here to prevent scoring at four out of six was the comparison to the accepted scientific context. Finally, communication was very good in general. It was easy to follow what was happening here, but there were some issues as we pointed out with no in-text citations and a little bit of uh, issue with the uncertainty with respect to temperature and of course with respect to the burette reading that immediately suggests that this cannot be a four, it's got to be a three. So what it leaves you with is three out of four for communication, which is very much going to be what most students will score for an IA that looks like this. Evaluation, you'll score in the three to four bracket. Analysis in that three to four bracket again. Exploration, here it was given four, uh, but the maximum in the three, four bracket, the other two being given three each, and here one. So a total of one, four, three, three, three gave this particular report a score of 14 out of 24. So Archie Dunn out there in New Zealand, I hope you watch this, I hope it's helpful. And for everyone else who's watching, if you need some more guidance, uh, please feel free to write a comment below or send me an email and I would be happy to give you some guidance but I do want to point out that this particular IA that was posted here is not to be used by anyone to submit to their teacher it's it's a tremendous level of academic dishonesty and cheating if you do that and no one is to ask someone else to write up their IA report it's best you do this yourself and you get whatever score you deserve as opposed to asking someone else to write it up for you which is unethical, it's illegal, and of course, it's just plain dishonest.